<laughs> lateral condyle fractures. Lateral condyle fractures. Lateral condyle fractures. Lateral condyle fractures. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to our paediatric series of instructional videos and this one we're talking about lateral condyle fractures with Anish. Anish, tell me about lateral condyles. So do you know, I think the lateral condyle fracture is actually harder and more important than the supracondyle fracture. Okay, I think people get really excited about the supracondyle fracture. The problem with the lateral condyle fracture is it can be easily missed and it can be underestimated. Yep. Um, so the first challenge in these is picking it up. So here's an apinolateral radiograph of the elbow. Um, and if you're looking, you can see here on it's, the AP. It's like the tiniest fleck, isn't it? It looks like absolutely nothing. Yeah, and sometimes you're sitting there thinking, is that really a fracture? Okay, so you've got to have your two views. And remember, what you're worried about is that cartilaginous on log of the distal humerus. What you can see nicely on this view is that fracture line going down. And when you've got a fracture line going from proximal posterior to the physis, that's a lateral condyle fracture. Right. If it was a supracondylar fracture, it goes across. Right. So supracondylar is a transverse. Yeah. Uh, uh, lateral condyle go down towards the joint. Yeah. So in this case, okay, what you can see is that this is completely undisplaced. Okay. In terms of what's going on here, you're not worried that there's any significant displacement at the metaphysis. So this is going to be treated non-operatively. Just to just to illustrate the concern here, it is that. Uh, if you draw your cartilage analog out, it comes down here and rounds, articulates with the radial head, and then it goes up a little bit, and then you go down. It's a bit like a distal femur, isn't it? Kind of comes. Yeah. Is it something, something like that? Yeah. But it's a massive thing, isn't it? it is. And the ossific nucleus here is just a small part of it. But the concern is, of course, that that fracture line goes down and bump into there, which you can't see, which you just can't see. Yeah is there or not. So then you're using your other signs, what's going on in that metaphysis to work out what's going on distally. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's a, an undisplaced fracture. Pick it up, do treat it in a plaster because it could displace and hinge. Okay. Right. Uh, how long in a plaster? Three to four weeks. Now, here's another x-ray. This is another child elbow fracture. You look at the lateral view and you can see clearly that lateral condyle fracture that we spoke yep. about. When you look at the AP view, you're thinking, well, where is that fracture? I can hardly right? see it. Yeah. Um, but what we talked about with the x-rays before is always look for that soft tissue shadowing. So when you are yeah. doing your virtual clinic and you're thinking, well, is there something going on when you see that? That soft tissue shadowing is the big, so big soft tissue injury. Yeah. yeah. And then you look carefully and you can just see a little fleck there. But again, what are you, what are you thinking here? Displaced or undisplaced? Uh, on the on the on the basis of that AP, it looks undisplaced, doesn't it? So you're going to treat it in a plaster. Say we'll see it in a week's time and get another check X. Interesting, isn't it? How uh, how there's no fat pad on that lateral? Yeah, as we were saying, I really am not a big fan of fat pads, but that soft tissue shadowing. Okay. Yeah. That's when speaks. there's a proper injury, look for the soft tissue shadowing. So, can I just take you back one? Yeah. People might be looking at that and thinking, yeah, but how do I differentiate that little guy there? How do I differentiate that from a lateral epicondyle? Yeah. Lateral epicondyle. Yeah. Epicondyle. So um, what you're going to remember is crito. Okay. You can see a capitellum. Can you see the radial head? Not radial really, no. No. So the external epicondyle shouldn't be there. Should never be there because no. we haven't got an, we haven't got a, 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 a trochlea, we haven't got an electronon. Exactly. So we shouldn't have that. That shouldn't be there. So actually, that's any it's a really flex, good point. Any but then you're even there more suspicious. Has to be a fracture, doesn't it? Yeah. And remember, if you're not sure, if you really think, well, okay, but that guy said that they can appear out of sequence. Get an X-ray of the other side. Yeah. Brilliant. So you'll say, I'm going to see him in a week's time. And this is the problem. This is when there's scotch cast. When it's plaster of Paris for your back slab, you can see absolutely nothing. Yeah. But this is real life. You're sitting in your fracture clinic. And what you can see is now the fracture going through the metaphysis. Yeah. You can see it exiting through that distal metaphysis. Okay. But what we can't tell is what's going on yeah. at that cartilage. That's right. Okay. How far down that extends and whether it comes yeah. through or whether it doesn't. And is it stable? Is it not? Now, you could say, look, it's more than likely going to be stable, but it depends on how lucky you're feeling on that day. Okay. Yep. The worst would be treat this non-operatively, see him again in about three weeks time, plaster off, 
and then you find that they're stiff because they're going to be stiff and then you're thinking is it because I missed a problem with the joint so for me this child ended up having an arthrogram because people have described ultrasound sure. uh, I don't think ultrasound is very good in somebody who's got a broken elbow and an MRI is not going to be useful okay because they'd have to have a GA and again what we can see this time is uh, that fracture looks even more obvious in terms of its displacement so I'm getting even more suspicious. What's the worry about a displacement of a lateral condyle? Why do people worry about that? Yeah, it's, and that's, I think that's a really good question, okay? And you've just got to appreciate what we're talking about because it's about that articular fracture, okay? If you had a peel-on fracture, uh, are you going to accept any step in it? No, obviously not. No, and it's the same here, okay? So don't worry about the physis, but what we're really worried about is that and what's going on here. Is it coming through there? Is there a big gap here? And do we need to close that down and yep. restore the articular surface? Okay. So, took him to theatre and we've done an arthrogram there. And what you can see is that we've got an intact articular surface. Right, let's just, can we just draw this out? Because yeah. these, these arthrograms can be a bit confusing, can't they? So here's the metaphysis coming down. We've got to have our, our analyzer going to be coming like that. It's coming right over your radial head, something yeah. like that and then, uh, of your trochlear rather, and then it comes down here over your, oopsie, over your radial head and up. Is that, yeah, is that, is that reasonable, that's, something that's like that? It, We've yeah. got some pooling of the, of, the, of the dye just in there on the lateral side, yeah. and we're worried about it coming down through here, aren't we? Yeah. That's, that's what we're, we're fearful of. Yeah. So the question, I guess, is, is, are we seeing dye tracking up exactly. that track? Yeah. And that's why, again, you don't want to put too much dye into this because then you'll see everywhere. nothing. Yeah. yeah. So. We're there, we're in theatres, child under an anaesthetic, arthrogram shows that everything is intact. Yeah. But at that point, you're not gonna, I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna just say that's it, it's fine, let's stick him back in a plaster. So it's very simple, percutaneous fixation to really make sure that everything's gonna be okay. Right, so the role of the arthrogram here is to decide whether you're going for percutaneous or whether you're gonna open it. Exactly. Okay, so once they're in theatres, they're getting something. So if we said that the fracture is kind of coming through here, what you want to do is have fixation perpendicular to the fracture line. And perpendicular to the joint line. Yeah. Okay. And so that's what we did. Okay. So you can see <laughs> K-wire fixation there. These are um, two millimeter K-wires? They are. They are two millimeters. Yeah. Um, it does depend on the size of the child, but really you can get two millimeters in quite easily. These tend to be slightly older kids than the supracondylist. They're yeah. not going to happen at age two. Okay. What's important, I think, here is when you look at that fracture line just there, and what you want to see, ideally, doesn't happen always, is your fixation going perpendicular to it. So you can see it's going from back to front. Yep. And here, that line that we're talking about is going through cartilage. Okay? Yes. So that K-wire. Looks like it's floating in midair. Yeah, and it can be a bit worrying when sometimes, because you can imagine if it was slightly longer, it's going to go from there to there, and you think, man, have I just come straight out of the front of the joint? Yeah. Okay? So just be confident that you were doing the right thing in yeah. theatres. Absolutely. And again, but your, cart your cartilage block looks something like this on the lateral, doesn't it? Exactly. And so, although it looks like it's floating in midair, actually it's in it's solid, well it's, it's well within cartilage all the way across. Great. Okay, and that's what it looks like in, on the AP. And again, you see that transverse wire just coming straight across, yeah, making it through, through apparently yeah. nothing, but actually holding that intra-articular split together. Yeah. So Pete, your turn now, okay, so we've got a, a lateral <laughs> oh, view. No. This is a child who's fallen over, there is a history yeah. of trauma. What do you think? Well, I'm not seeing any fat pads, that's for sure. There's no fat pads there. Yeah, there can't and, be a fracture. Right, or, or there can't be a serious injury. So in my virtual fracture clinic, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm not, not nothing much to worry about here. I mean, if I'm honest, I, my, my eye is drawn to the cortical un irregularity just there, yeah. but I, I'm not expecting to see very much of excitement on the AP. No. And it's amazing, and the lateral condyles can do this. Okay, so what do you That's think of that? Astonishing, isn't it? That yeah, is cool. astonishing. That is so. Let's just again. Let's can I just draw what, yeah. what we're what we're looking at here? Let's start on the medial side. We should have cartilage coming down here, around over the top there, and then uh, over the radial head, and then see around like that. Is that is that about reasonable where the cartilage is? That is probably what's going on. But what you know. But, but what I, I think my fracture is coming through here, yeah. down through the, the physis and yeah. out there. And because there is a step just here, yeah. there must be a step in the joint yeah. three or four mil further down. So this is a milch one. Okay, it's going through that capitellum. Yeah. And when you're looking at that displacement, remember we were talking about the metaphysis, 
And what what you're doing is looking at your fracture gap here. Yeah. And your fracture gap here. And they are wide, aren't they? They're widely they are. displaced. They are. So it is highly likely to be going through there. And what you can also see though, what you highlighted quite nicely, is the disruption in the capitellum itself. Yeah. Okay, so you can see that. But the worry would be if this were a milch type two, so instead of going down through the capitellum, it actually comes across and down through here, yeah. you wouldn't see anything other than the metaphyseal bit. Yeah, especially when it's not too displaced. Okay, so yes. if it's massively displaced, then yeah, the whole capitellum is pointing in a funny direction when it's a milch two. Right. But you could imagine, you can have your fracture through that distal humeral cartilaginous surface, but everything's still looking vaguely okay. Yeah, yeah, great. And of course, we've thrashed this before, but it can't be an internal epicondyle, an epicondyle. It has to be a condyle because we, we haven't got a medial one. We haven't got a, uh, a, an electronon uh, and we, we've barely even got like a radial head. Yeah, great. So this one I think is a no brainer, okay? So um, this is gonna go to theater. You know the articular surface is disrupted. You could do an arthrogram just for the fun of it, but really you're gonna open up this fracture. You're gonna visualize the joint surface yes. and you're gonna put it back together again. So an open reduction. For me, when the fragment is big enough, they are gonna get um, a screw fixation. So the evidence shows that you get better compression, which is common sense. But what you can see here again is that we've got your fracture line there. And so this is my cannulated screws guide wire. Depending on the size of the child and what you've got, I tend to use 3.54 or 4.5. I try and avoid titanium screws because they are a pain to remove and you're gonna be removing these. Right. Okay. Um, and when you put those in, you wanna make sure you don't go through the electron on the fossa, okay? Because you normally, for me, I take the plaster off at about three weeks, get them moving. Get them moving. Yeah. And ha just remind me how you're approaching that. So we're, we're, we've, we've got your lateral epicondyle here. Where's, where's, where's your incision? Yes. You're coming... So basically, you're going to use II, mark it there, but you're coming straight down onto that lateral supracondylar ridge, not a cocker. If you do the cocker, you're going to basically end up at the radial head and the neck. Yeah. This, you might need to bring down so that you can get into the joint. So you're going down the yeah. lateral supracondylar ridge, curve it towards the joint so you can actually open up the elbow joint, go over the front of the humerus, stick your McDonald in, and then you're lifting all the soft tissue up so you right. can see. So you drop your McDonald across the front of the joint and just yeah. bring, it, bring it forwards, yeah. and that shows you that intra-articular split yeah. coming down. And that's down. the most important bit. You put the split together, and then you use your metaphysis as secondary reference, but don't worry if that looks slightly off, it always does, but it's yeah. the joint surface. Got it. Okay. Got it. And that's the post-op x-rays there. Looks okay. Again, it looks like it's floating in midair, but of course it's not. No. Okay. And so in terms of how you do this, there are various different classifications. Remember, milch is just essentially descriptive. Milch 1, through the capitellum, the acidic nucleus. Milch 2, they say through the capitulotrochlear groove, which is the cartilage. Okay? Yeah. You can't see that. It doesn't help you guide your management. So Jacob and Fowles came up with a system, and then a lot of people have modified it and taken their own version. The most recent one that is useful, I think, is this song classification, okay? And it tells you basically about the fracture that we've been talking about. So you can see that you've got a big gap here coming down, doesn't even hit the metaphysis, so it's not gonna be displaced. Big gap here, but very small fracture line there. Right, so if it's going from a big gap to a small gap, there's like a funnel going down. Yeah. The implication is it does not progress exactly. into the joint. So you can be pretty cool and confident that that is gonna be non-operative management. This one is the one that is difficult, okay, the stage three, where you've got a big gap here, but a big gap at the metaphysis. So it's right, not so they're huge. almost, they're almost tr parallel, parallel lines like rather, than, rather, than, rather than converging lines. Yeah. The worry is what is going on at the articular surface, and these are the guys that are gonna need the arthrogram and maybe yeah. percutaneous fixation. Yeah. And then the final two, okay, so when you can see that you've got wild fracture gap here and wild fracture gap there, it's going to need fixing. And yep. then here, uh, mayhem is going on. Yeah, it's okay. actually been spat out completely. Yeah. yeah, great. And that's the algorithm I'd use for lateral condyle fractures, and it's been validated as well. So I think it works, and other people think it works too. Great. Anish, thanks very much. Cheers, mate, thank you. Lateral condyle fractures.